What's up guys, I'm Matt right here. <laughs> yeah, I got down here braided, finally. It's off and on in these videos, because I know you guys see it. I don't know if you care too much, but I think it looks tight. So I'm just gonna take a moment on this video, and just show it off. Hey. Anyways, today we're picking up on the new sub, back on the subclasses for Tasha's. We left off on the Barbarians, and we're, depending on how this stuff posts out, I actually did have started this video for the Phantom Rogue, um, but I ran out of space on my my recorder, so I had to start over basically in the middle of the video And you sometimes if it happens like in the flow I can delete some stuff and just pick it up But after that day I just called it a day So I'm just gonna start over on it. You guys won't know but um just wanted to let you guys know because in um, In the soul knife video I think I was speaking as if I had made this video already and I haven't so I'm gonna make it now So what Tasha said is collecting the soul of your DVD Sorry. Collecting the souls of your defeated foes is an everyday object. What a good idea. Though I'd probably need an encyclopedia to hold all my anti-admirers. So, the haters. Tasha has a lot of haters. That one wasn't really as funny as the, uh, some of the other posts that I've seen in the book. Um, but yeah, so it comes with a couple cool features. Um, Token of the Departed is really my coolest thing that makes me want to play this. And then look at the art on here. The face paint on this tiefling looks amazing. I have never thought of doing face paint for one of my characters, but just that little bit of face paint changes the comp the character's depiction completely. It looks like a whole different person. Okay, so at third level, you get Whispers of the Dead. Echoes of those who have died cling to you. Whenever you finish a short or long rest, you can choose one skill or tool proficiency you lack and gain it. The ghostly presence shares this knowledge with you. You lose this proficiency when you use a feature, when you use this feature to change it into something else. So basically you get a free proficiency in a skill that's editable at every long or short rest. So that is actually pretty cool because you can pick something that, to better yourself in and then you're not locked into it. You can just change it after a short rest. So that's awesome. Um, although as a rogue, I mean, you get so many skill buffs. I don't know what you're not proficient in at this point that you don't have that as a rogue that you would need. So. Um, next up, we have Wells from the Grave. Um, immediately after you deal your sneak attack damage, you can target a second creature within 30 feet. So that is super cool. So rogues love that sneak attack. But on your second attack for the sneak attack, you don't use all your dice. You use half of your dice, I believe. Let me check. Yep, half and you round up. Um, and then that creature takes necrotic damage up to the total. Um, and you can use this a number of times up to your proficiency bonus between long rests. So that is also pretty cool because I mean as a rogue I'm gonna try to sneak attack whenever I can and I know it limits us on the proficiency bonus, but Sometimes I'm in a party that whenever we run out of stuff We just long rest um, as a DM. I hate this I hate when players just long rest because then they're just flying through all of your there's no there's no um, accountability when you're just throwing your spells and your abilities and you're not keeping track of stuff like that as a DM, I try to prevent my characters from throwing long resting whenever they want, just because the world isn't going to stop for you. Um, but whenever I'm in a party, I mean, I'm the DM, um, so I'm going to long rest if the DM's going to let me long rest. So that's pretty cool, but I wouldn't even worry about it, because like I said, whenever I'm playing this character, we long rest whenever we want, pretty much. Um, Tokens of the Departed, this is one, the one that's really cool. Um, so whenever a creature dies around you, you can, um, you can snatch the soul and put it in a little token like a coin or something like that it's a trinket um, and you can have up to your proficiency bonus of these um, so whenever you have at least one of these on you you have advantage on death saving throws constitution saving throws that is crazy that's super cool um rogues aren't super squishy but that'll definitely help if you go down or maybe you're sneaking into a situation you fell a stealth check and now everybody is on you, you go down, but you have advantage on death saving throws. That's pretty cool. As long as your teammates get there before they hit you while you're down and you fell those death saves automatically. Um, whenever you deal your sneak attack, you can destroy one of your trinkets and immediately use wells from the grave, which is that third level ability. That's where you, um, wow, that's pretty cool. You can use one of your trinkets to use wells of the grave. That's where you can do that sneak attack extra damage so you can use half your dice immediately and this does not count as one of your usage if you use a token instead so it's kind of like ritual casting if you cast a spell as a ritual it doesn't use a spell slot if you use that feat using a token 
then it doesn't use your your usage of that. So that is pretty cool. Um, as an action, you can destroy one of your trinkets no matter where it's at. Um, and the spirit of that trinket has to answer one question. And, oh, it doesn't have to be truthful, but it does have to be answered. Answer your question. So, I mean, that can be pretty cool if your DM works it into the campaign. Somebody that you killed has some valuable information. You can hold that soul hostage until they give you that information. At level 13, you get Ghost Walk. Um, so, you, be, you basically can, can become Ethereal. You have a flying speed of 10. You can hover and attacks have disadvantage against you. You can also move through creatures and objects like difficult terrain. So that means you get half your movement speed basically whenever you move through objects. And you can stay in, in this form for 10 minutes or you can end it as a bonus action. But if you end your turn within an object like a wall or a person, you take 1d10 force. Um, yeah, you take 1d10 force damage. So that's also pretty cool, I mean, it could, it, I mean, I could see how it would be useful as a rogue, for sure. Um, a little bit of flavor, really, for me. Um, you, I mean, you can't attack at this, and you can only use this, you can only use this once between long rest, or once again, you can destroy a soul trinket and do this again, so. But if your proficiency bonus is pretty low, you only have so many soul trinkets, and now you're blowing them left and right just to become ethereal. Um, but um, hey, I like it, I like that feature a lot. Um, Death's Friend, level 17, when you use your Wells from the Grave, that's going to be your sneak attack, your double sneak attack action. You can deal necrotic damage to the first and the second creature. Wow, that is amazing. So how that works is you do your sneak attack on the first creature, then you, you roll half your dice again, and that damage is going to affect the first creature you attack and the second creature you attack. That's amazingly good to me, especially at higher levels. That's, that's crazy good. You know how many sneak attack dice a rogue has at level 17? A lot. I don't know either. I don't know either. A lot though. <laughs> um, cool. Oh, and at the end of a long rest, a soul trinket appears in your hand if you don't have any soul trinkets. So that's pretty cool. So at level 17, you'll never be without a soul trinket. So that's pretty cool. Um, between this class and the basically the, the soul knife feature, uh, feature I think I like this one much more versus flavor. The um, Soul Knife does have the psychic teleportation, which like I, I don't I think I said this. Like I said, whenever I picture you throwing a knife and teleporting to it, all I can picture is the four Hokage in Naruto, which really makes me want to try that. <laughs> and I want to reflavor it as a flying kunai. But this one is also super cool. I can't wait to get to play this. I still have not been able to Play any of these soul classes besides Path of the Beast Barbarian, and I barely got to even play that. Um, I'm working on a Blade Singing Wizard. That's what I'm gonna play next, I think, because I've never played a wizard, and the Blade Singing Wizard really seemed interesting to me. Um, but as far as the so far as the Phantom Rogue, this looks like a great addition to the Rogue subclasses. Um, usually whenever I, I've only played Rogue like once or twice and I love magic, so I usually play Arcane Twister, Trickster. But this Phantom Rogue seems pretty cool. There's a lot of flavor in this subclass built for role playing. Um, you're like a collector of spirits basically, a, a bounty hunter. I love that flavor. Um, it's probably, as far as flavor goes, it's probably my favorite like role playing flavor subclass that I've gone so far. You know, I had the Path of the Beast, Path of the Wild Magic, and the Soul Knife. Out of all three of these, as far as role-playing capabilities, I think the Phantom Rogue has the most um, potential. It has the most potential out of the four class, out of those four classes that I've done so far. But that's pretty much it, guys. Just giving you my thoughts and a summary on the how the abilities work of the Phantom Rogue. And I will catch you guys next time. Event Horizon. Peace. <laughs>